Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're going to get started working on yet another MacBook. Before we get started, let's have our announcements for the day. Firstly, uh, we apologize for store.rossmangroup.com not being functional for a while. Store.rossmangroup.com is now back to functioning. We uh, have since fired the Magento developer that made the website not work in Firefox and several other browsers. You can add items to cart again, like gallons of Amtec Flux, ISL 9239s, CD 3215s, LT3470s, LP8550s, and Atten Hot Air Stations that will come with the bent nozzles. And we also have a lot of stuff that we probably should be adding to the site for the newer machines that we haven't. So let us know in the comments down below the chips that we're missing and the chips we should have. Secondly, if you are interested in a job and you are knowledgeable enough that you could be an entry-level board repair technician, meaning you know how to solder, you know what PP3B42 is, Contact us at Don't Delay, work here today at RossmanGroup.com. That's Don't Delay, work here today at RossmanGroup.com. Also, if you are a hard drive data recovery technician, we have positions open for that as well. Must be experienced. Feel free to email if you don't have experience. I will probably delete the email. Just being honest here so we don't waste our time. That being said, let's get on to the video. Oh no, not this old piece of shit. No, this is the Erica MacBook. Ew! 820-3209? Gross! Pugh. The PCH isn't even integrated into the processor. Oh, son of a bitch, I'm getting a call from one of those other sp spam numbers. Oh, suck my dick. I get these calls like five times a day now. So aggravating. I like my Moto G, it works very well. I like the job, but I live in London. London is a really, really long commute. Unless you're willing to do a Titanic commute every day to work, I don't know how we're gonna make that work out. You can always try, but something tells me the commute's gonna f Let's get the board out of the case and try to figure out what's wrong with this. You know what really sucks? When you get to that point where you're large enough a company that you actually need to have like write-ups in an HR department. I think I've gotten to the point where I actually have to do write-ups. It sucks, but, like, it, 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 it really sucks. I remember saying when I was younger, once I get to a point where I have to have write-ups at my company, I'm probably gonna quit. And now I'm there, but it's like, shit, what do you do? I sense another PM Sleep S4L missing. Mm. <laughs> Sideshow Bob going on here. Maybe it'll turn on now that I took it out of the case. Hi, Legorel. How are you? And thank you very much. The issue is 6 milliamps to 19 milliamps. We have a green light, so we're probably getting... Volt, we are probably getting... have a working SMC and PP3042 underscore G3 hot present. Let's go over the board and see what we see. I'm expecting corrosion by the clock chip. A uh, short on PP bus. Actually, no, not a short on PP bus. Maybe a blown fuse on PP bus G3 hot, but. Okay, never mind. Here we go. Here we go, baby. See those probe points? See those probe points? They're corroded. Look at that. We have corrosion everywhere. And what I would like to do. Let me show you what I want to do. Yes. This is actually messier than the exacto knife in my opinion.
Very weirdly placed corrosion. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. That's the, that's the headshot right there. This is the chip that creates my 3.3 and 5 volt rails that you saw on the other stream. That's the headshot. Thank you for watching ATRT7. Sometimes I kind of wonder if what I'm producing actually helps or gets anybody to do anything. And uh, seeing stuff like that, we're seeing Tim streams where he shows how he's fixing stuff that gets butchered by much larger organizations really does kind of make all the work that goes into making this kind of stuff and editing it and everything seem like it's worthwhile. So thank you very much for that. I really genuinely do appreciate it and it does kind of encourage me to make sure I keep on doing what I'm doing. So just again, thank you very much. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that junk and I'm going to replace it. I'll be right back right after this break from our sponsors. Now, as you can see, down there, there is a missing pad. Now, a lot of people have asked, why don't I use a fiberglass pen to scrape stuff instead of a knife or tweezers? Well, look at the size of the pad. See the size of the pad? See that? Okay, now check out the size of the fiberglass pen. Yeah, that, yeah. So, this is my little exacto blade over here. See? So... Hopefully that answers that question. I have genuinely appreciated to the individual that sent me these fiberglass pens. Thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate it. However, if you see me using a knife instead, it's because the size of it is much more convenient and allows me to do what it is that I'm doing. How's the quick been working for you? It's all right. I would probably buy an Atten if I was gonna uh, you know, go back in time and start purchasing stuff. They're virtually indistinguishable, honestly. It's just the Atten is like mildly cheaper. Okay, so that's that. I tried to fix my mini PC. Couldn't see any corrosion or schematic. Oh. Yep, that sounds like your good old fashioned nightmare. All right, wait for the alcohol to evaporate. Add some. Authentic Amtec soldering flux that you can now add to cart on store.rossmangroup.com. Store.rossmangroup.com is back up and running, my friends. Tell me the chips that you want us to stock. And I will make an effort to stock them. All right, so we've re rehabilitated that pad. Kate is doing some very high quality concern trolling. Do not take the bait, my friends. Do not take the bait of what's called a concern troll. All right, so this is in place. Long Island doesn't count because there's no such thing as home ownership there. Home ownership doesn't exist. If you're paying 15 to 20,000 bucks a year on top of the, of the 500 to a million you paid for your house, I mean, you don't, you don't own anything. Long Island, you really, like there's, there's no ownership in that, uh, there at, at whatsoever. I mean, they've managed to scam people into living someplace where you buy a house for $500,000 and then you pay $12,000 or more a year for the privilege of keeping it. Check this out. Now it's working again. It's not power cycling. So, first thing I'm going to do, go to Flex Board View and open up the Board View and Schematic for an 820. 820-3209. And yes, for the person that said taxes go to schools and roads. So if Long I here's the thing. Are the if the schools in Long Island cost fifteen to twenty thousand a year, and there are other parts of the country where they manage to educate their children 
with property taxes of two to 3,000 a year, are you getting a school that's five times better in Long Island? Or, or is that money just going somewhere it's not supposed to? I tend to believe the latter. I really find it very difficult to believe that the schools in Long Island are four to five times better than the schools in Delaware. Maybe they are. Maybe they're buying MacBooks for every student or some stupid shit like that. I became very cynical when it came to property taxes. Earlier, around, I think it was around 2013 or 2014, there was this entire school district that started sending me MacBooks. I'm just wondering, why the fuck are you getting people in K through 5 $1,000 computers? Are you out of your fucking mind? Who's paying for this? Oh, wait. You are, if you own a home in that neighborhood. You are paying for kids to have MacBooks. Fuck that. No way in hell. Get the fuck out of here. There's no way. I'm not paying fifteen dollars to $20,000 a year so that kids can have iPads and MacBooks in every fucking class in kindergarten through fifth grade when they're going to destroy them. I'm not saying you shouldn't have kids learn how to be computer savvy. Don't get, don't get it twisted. But the whole idea behind Macs is that they just work. The whole idea behind a Mac is that forget about all that Linux and forget about all that Windows shit. We have our own special magical way of doing things that makes it way easier than everybody else's. So you're going to teach kids how to learn a non-standard system to some extent that is designed from the ground up to be easy to people who are computer noobs and charge the taxpayer more money for their homes to afford it. Okay, so our corrosion was over here. R7245, what are you doing? So this sits between our PP5VS3 creation circuit and the chip responsible for creating it. And the way it's going to see what's on output over there is by having a zero ohm resistor and a capacitor between here and the, the output and the chip itself. So that is what this does. And it's called the Vibist. And you may say, I have no idea what all this stuff is. This is all very confusing. What is a buck converter? How is a buck converter controlled? Why is there an RC circuit in between the transistor and the chip? The great part is you don't really have to know all that. What you have to do when you have a board like this is you see the corrosion, you fix the corrosion, you ultrasonic the board, and it works again. So that is about that. That's it for today. I apologize for this very, very poor explanation of a buck converter. I have lost my enthusiasm to explain it because I've explained it millions of times. I think in older videos, I used pictures to show you how this works with a little multi. I had a oscilloscope set up on the desk and I actually took screenshots at each phase of the buck converter circuit so that I could explain it in a manner where it made a little bit more sense. I've lost a little bit of that natural enthusiasm because those videos are like five or six years old now. But hopefully this made sense to you. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now. Oh, lastly, before we go, some tips if you are ultrasonically cleaning boards and you have a problem where you wind up killing some every now and then, or if you're new to ultrasonically cleaning, uh, I do have a guide that I will link to here on my wiki on how to clean a motherboard. It could still use some work for sure, but it gives you some general idea when it comes to MacBooks, like the glossy versus the matte finish boards, because the glossy finished ones are often easier to kill. How can you risk killing a board in an ultrasonic cleaner? How should you use it properly so that you don't wind up killing your board? What often kills the board in an ultrasonic cleaner? And so on and so forth. This is just some basic stuff from years of experience dealing with employees that fucked up boards. And it may be useful to you if you are ultrasonically cleaning boards or just getting into liquid damage repair. And if you would like to contribute some pictures that don't suck, by all means, I would be happy to have make that uh, take them. Remember that everything that I post here is going to be openly available to anybody who wishes to view it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next video.